Hey guys, this is Terry Shanahan with A Thousand Calls a Day, and today I am joined with my colleague, Amber, and we are going to talk through um, some of the things that we track on a weekly basis and how we help you run your campaigns. So when you hire us, you're, you're getting an entire team of people. You're getting access to professionals who have run outbound calling campaigns, who know how to look at the numbers every week, make adjustments, make tweaks that can help you get better results close more deals and make more money. So today I'm joined by Amber, who's our top success coach. She looks at these numbers, she meets with our clients every week and coaches them on how to get better results. So Amber, I wanna thank you for taking some time to talk today. And I would love for you to maybe just kind of start off, um, give us a general overview of, of what is tracked each week. Um, and, and I know we're looking right now at a pretty detailed spreadsheet and it, it would, we call it a performance audit, but maybe you can just kind of walk us through some of the general things that we track. Yeah, of course. Hey, Terry, um, I'm glad to be here. And this is a very important part of our weekly meetings. So we actually track a whole lot um, for our clients. So we're able to track the number of dials, the number of people we talk to, the number of leads we turn over. Um, and also the specific ratios. So we want a certain contact ratio. We want a certain conversion ratio. And those are the people we talk to and the people we turn into leads. So we can see all of that on a large scale. We can also go down to a daily view where we can see how many calls a day are made, how many contacts a day. And so we can really pinpoint if there are any performance issues with the VA or the data. Another very important thing that we can track here is the rate at which we're going through the data. So we have a list here of about 15,000 and we're able to see how many are new that we have not called yet, how many contacts are in progress and how many are finalized. And this is gonna be really important to making sure that we keep fresh data on file for you, um, on file for our clients so that we can continue to see a high amount of leads being turned over. Um, so every week we'll start off with the performance audit. We'll look at your month to date totals. Um, we'll see what you did last month. I think for example, this one here, if I can go a little bit this way, we had 71 totals last month. So far this month to date, we've had 17 leads sent over um, and we can, con we can track their contact rate and their conversion rate. So for this client, we can see a huge boom recently We've made some changes to their perform um, to their dialer system that have really improved their performance. Um, and so every week we're able to go in and, and look at specifically where you're at in your data and in the progress and make those changes to ensure that we're calling the best numbers at the right time um, to get the best performance for for your campaign. Amber, that's awesome. Now, obviously, you know, the whole, the whole thing is, you know, some people could get, just go hire a VA directly um, without us and they could, you know, probably pay a pretty low hourly fee, find somebody online, but they'd obviously have to train them and mentor them and watch them and monitor them and, and, and ongoing coach them. And, you know, we do all of that for you. Plus, we look at the data. You know, there's definitely some things in here that I think would be very, very, very hard for the average person, the average real estate agent or investor to be able to track and monitor on their own. Can you Absolutely. talk, you know, just a little bit about what, like, obviously, you know, the contact rate went, went up drastically. Like, what are some potential things that could be changed? Like, just in general speaking, like when you're talking to a client, like, can you give us some examples of things that we could change for somebody to get better results? Yes, of course. Um, so... Well, first off, we want to say that one thing that they cannot do for themselves is pull the reports that allow us to look at the data to see if there's any changes that need to be made. So we pull those on a daily basis um, for our clients and we're able to really track that. And then when we identify that there is something that needs to be changed, um, whether there, there's a lot of different things we can do. So um, we can actually, each list that they sent over is set at a certain priority in our dialer we can focus on certain lists. We can call them first. Um, there, are other, there are other ways that we can focus on a certain list that's performing well by scheduling them for a certain day or a certain time. And we have this automatically set up. Um, the other thing we can do is change out how often we're switching out the caller IDs that our VAs are calling from. 
um, that will also help improve your contact rate. And in addition to that, if, if it's not a data issue, sometimes we have performance issues that are going to be more related to um, a VA. So whether there's some coaching, your, your caller needs some coaching. Um, we're able to do a lot on the coaching side as well that most clients are not going to be able to do on their own. That's awesome. So how do we know, like, for example, you know, the average person who's looking at this, they, they don't understand, I don't think, you know, because I'm always talking to people who are looking at hiring us and a lot of them have hired some in-house ISAs that are making outbound calls for them or OSAs technically, technically it would be. Right. But how do we know like if data is not performing, like if they've given us a list of people to call and it's not good or it's, it's bad data, what, what are some things that would, would indicate that we, could, that we could show to them? Well, there's a lot of things. Um, so initially when we get the list, we scrub it for bad numbers, which are either they're missing a digit, maybe they have an extra digit in there, they're malformed in some way. Um, a lot of times we can identify a large number of bad numbers in a list that they may have had to have called through if they were doing it on their own to identify that. Um, however, we have a process that pulls those from the get-go and we're also able to identify them and send them back to you so that if you have a data quality issue wherever you're purchasing data, that you can go on and correct that. Um, the other thing we can look at is the contact rate and the conversion rate. So again, we spoke earlier about the goal. We want a 5% contact rate and a 3 to 4% conversion rate. And those are our minimums. If we see that a list is not getting that, um, if we're not talking to at least 5% of the people that we're dialing, we're able to actually go in there and speed up the dialer. So we're already calling at a very fast pace. We can actually speed it up and monitor it very carefully to um, call more people and get them on the phone. Um, and, and that really will help us get through that list. So just to confirm that I understand these terms right, and obviously the, the, the average person listening to this who might not know some of the terminology, the contact rate means the number of people we talk to. So if, if it's 5%, it means we call 100 people and we talk to five. That's then, absolutely correct. Is that correct? Okay, great. And then the conversion rate means of the people we talk to, what percentage do we turn into a lead? Exactly. And okay. so we have, we have actual goals um, for each of our VAs. So when they're new, we want them to get a minimum of 30 leads, and that's about one lead a day. However, once they are tenured and trained, we expect 40 to 50 leads a month, and that's going to be more of uh, one to three leads a day. Um, and so we're able to track that on a day by day um, basis for our VAs. So this is a very high performing VA here. She actually turned over seven leads in one day and only had to talk to 40 people. She actually only dialed less than 300. So you're going to see her contact rate is three times the average. Her conversion rate is closer to five times the average. Um, so when we have a high performing VA, the stats don't matter as much, but we do have a minimum that we expect to see and we are able to track that very clearly with these reports. Gotcha. Now, is this, does that mean that she made about 266 calls that entire day or did she have other campaigns that she worked on that day too? Do you know? So specifically with this list, this was um, the only list that was being called on. Gotcha. Um, and, and this list is a little bit different because we were calling um, ex, uh, people who are already in this client's system and using the caller ID from their business, it's going to have a little bit different of a contact ratio because gotcha. they've, they've talked to these guys before. But on, um, but on average, 5% is what we expect to see. Perfect. And, and then also on average, is it fair to say that we generally are making between about 450 and 750 dials per day when you look at most of the general campaigns, obviously this one's a little bit lower because of the type of campaign, but. Yes. Yeah, so for most of the time, we expect to see between 450 and 700 dials a day. Okay. Um, and we expect to see contacts anywhere between 30 and 40. Okay. So we're able to break it down to what we expect on a daily basis. And we also have our monthly goals as well. Okay, um, great. Great. Um, now, let me ask you this. One of the things that I get asked a lot and, and you know, well, I guess taking a step back, I, I think a lot of the things that you're referencing 
with the pulling the reports and stuff, you know, we have access to high end call center software that we're using right now called five nine. And, and we obviously have an in-house person who pulls those reports and who's an expert on five nine and then, you know, gets them to you and you're an expert on interpreting them and knowing how to, how to make changes. Um, but is there anything else you would want to say about five nine that, that, you know, um, that can just allow us to do things for our clients that they probably couldn't do on their own? Well, yeah, absolutely. So one of the best things that I love about five nine is we're able to actually go and pull call recordings. Um, so if we have a VA who's new, um, and say you're a new client with us and you're really wanting to work on making sure the script is working for you and making sure that the VA understands your market. Um, if you have a lead that's turned over that you would like to hear that call recording, we have a form that you can fill out and we can send you that specific call recording um, for you to go over. It will also alert our coaches to go over that call recording with the VA for any coaching opportunities. Um, and that's a great tool that Five9 offers um, to allow us to really dig in and work with our VAs um, on a call by call basis. Awesome. And then t talk a little bit about the caller IDs. I know a lot of people don't realize this, but is it true that we, you know, most of our clients, we could have 10 different caller IDs. I think we call them outbound ANIs, but the number that shows up when our, when our, when our ISA is calling for them or OSA is calling for them, making outbound calls on their behalf, mm -hmm. we're talking about the number that shows up on the prospect's caller ID. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, definitely. So that's actually a pretty important part of what we're doing here. Um, so what we've found is a client will send us a batch of initially, hopefully about 10 outbound ANIs, and we will start off changing that outbound ANI once a week. And that will show everybody we call that week, that's what the caller ID will say. So when we change it out once a week, next week when we're calling, it looks like a whole nother number is calling and the contact rate will go up. Um, on the other side of that, if we're having a problem with the contact rate already, say we're ha not a lot of people are answering the phone and we're, we've sped up the dialer and that doesn't help, we can go to changing those outbound ANIs twice a week to where they're, the lead is more likely to answer the phone because they don't recognize the number. Um, yeah. So it helps us stay aggressive and it helps improve those contact rates. Um, now, normally they will order them from like call rail, but Five Nine also has the ability for us to order them and manage them for our clients. Um, and so we can actually stay on top of when it, you need to order more and, and managing all that for you and just adding it to your invoice as well. So that's another great tool that Five Nine offers. Awesome. Now, Amber, let's just say a client has like three to seven different campaigns they're running. Like this one is a, we're looking, we're staring at right now as a campaign that Maybe we can go to the list, I guess, because that would yeah. probably be a, a, a better try that. So like each green highlighted area is a different list, which is a different campaign, correct? Like a totally different. Correct. Okay. And so we actually track each individual campaign separately. And so we can give them feedback on each list, each campaign. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. And what's really cool about that is so say you buy data from like three different sources and you want to track and see which one does best. So you know which one to buy from next time that's absolutely possible um, on a week by week basis with this report here. Um, we've actually done that for a lot of our clients and identified a lot of new sources out there, um, options for our, for our clients. So I'm excited about that ability to do that as well. Yeah, that's awesome because data is expensive and you know, I know you and I have spent a lot of time trying to better understand data. We have a, a Google doc that you and I've been working on to, to, you know, just kind of list our data sources and anything we can to help people. And I think yeah. there's nothing that's going to be more important than tracking the analytics of that data. And we can actually show them what it looks like. And, and pretty soon, I think, you know, you are going to, you know, and our company as a whole are going to know more about the data than the company who's actually selling it. Because, you know, I think a lot of these data companies promise that their data is the best. And of course, right, right. we've got some great partners that do provide very good data, but well, it proves exactly. numbers, right? Exactly. So that's the best thing about our, um, about our data sources is our clients that are really invested in finding the best data, they have access to this report. They're able to go in at any time, look at what's performing best and keep that in mind when they're buying new data, because that is, that is probably the most time consuming and also one of the most important 
aspects of being successful with our company is, is finding the best data. Um, awesome. How do you know, okay, so if, if I'm your client and we're talking today and you identify something that needs to be changed, you know, you, you, you see something just since you look at these reports every day, all day, does the client have to do anything or do you go make that happen with on, you know, without the clients? A lot of, a lot of times it's, it's something that I can change on my own. However, if it's something that I need feedback from the client on, then obviously I would get in touch with them. Um, but some things I can see myself, for example, um, if I see a list here for is 30, 40% finalized, um, we know that this data is going to be showing diminished returns soon. Okay. And so that will alert me to talk to the client next time. Hey, we're going to be needing new data soon. Um, it can also alert me to this list is set at priority two. We need to bump it up to priority one so we can work our way through it. Um, and little changes like that are, we're able to make on the inside. However, if it's a big change, um, then, then definitely we would get feedback from the client on that. Gotcha. And a big change would be like totally changing a script or, or turning a list off completely. Gotcha. Um, turning a list off completely would be a big one. Gotcha. If it's just not performing, then we're wasting the, t the, the VA time. So we just need to stop. Right. Stop and that. a lot of times it will show that, Hey, we need some new data soon. And so we're able to stay on top of that um, months in advance and, and really watch the, progression of how we penetrate this data. Awesome. Amber, thanks so much. This is super helpful. I've just got a couple more questions for you. Um, how do we know if a caller is not performing? You know, so let's, let's say that we're using a script that's been performing well around the country with different clients and our client purchase data, but for some reason we're not getting the leads that we know we should be. How do we know if it's the caller's fault and maybe not the data's fault? Well, that's a very, um, that's a very important part of what we do. So like with any job place, there will be employees who don't perform to your standard. Um, and we're constantly, um, looking for them and attempting to train them or replace them. So what we can see when we go to, um, the monthly report, we'll look, we'll see they're not making enough dials. They're not making enough contacts. So both of those numbers will be low. Also, their lead count will be low. That will turn us to pull a report from 5.9 that shows if there's any call avoidance behavior. So sometimes it, they're just not getting directly back on the phone when they should. They're spending a little more time in the note-taking section of our dialer. Um, and that is something that we have no tolerance for with 1,000 calls a day. And so we are weekly pulling that report. And then again, if we see an issue in our weekly meetings, um, then we're also, we can pull that report um, for just that VA and do some coaching or find them a replacement if needed. Gotcha. Um, the other part of, of performance is, some, is if it, especially when they're new and our, all our VAs have call center experience, at least two years of it, but the real estate market is new and sometimes cold calling is new. And so when they're first getting into the market for their client and getting on the phone for them, there's going to be coaching opportunities, whether it's the way they take notes or it's the way they handle phone calls. Um, and getting the feedback from the client is going to be absolutely important in training their VA specifically the way that they need to um, to perform the best for their client. Gotcha. And, and that's just to touch on. I mean, it, it kind of goes without saying, but you know, we're our clients are hiring us to track all this, to do all this, to run all this, to do the heavy list lifting. But it's extremely important that they at least take, you know, 20, 30 minutes a week to meet with you because a lot of times we need their feedback. We need them to see this. And probably one of the most important things from, if I understand this correctly, but correct me if I'm wrong, is a lot of times clients just need to get us new data. Like we, we've called the data, we've called the list and we need new ones. And, and mm -hmm. if we don't have that, we're, we're spinning our wheels. Is that accurate? Or? Sometimes it's the data. Um, I will say sometimes we need new outbound A and I's, but especially in the first quarter with a client, it's just, it's extremely important to stay in touch weekly because there's going to be feedback about um, how their follow up is going. We're getting those processes in place. We have feedback for the VA as far as coaching goes, 
um, and any you know of the initial bumps in the road we want to get smoothed out so after we've kind of solidified how we're doing things and the VA is confident we can take those meetings to uh, bi-weekly if we need to um, but for most of the time just meeting 20 30 minutes a week that will keep us going um, strong awesome. it doesn't take more than that great Fantastic. Amber, as we wrap up today, is there anything else that I'm missing, you know, that's important that we didn't talk about that you'd love to share? Or Yeah, you know, I will say my favorite bit of advice right now um, is for the, the clients, um, when they get the leads from us, I want them to keep in mind that we are cold calling these leads. And so we're pretty aggressive to get them on the phone and turn them into leads for you. And when we get them turned over, it's going to be important that you stay aggressive to get that initial phone call. So we tell all of our, um, we tell all of our clients to call every lead within 24 hours, but we want to add to that to stay aggressive to get them on the phone for that initial phone call. I like to say twice a day for about 10 days. Um, that doesn't work for everyone, but as aggressive as you can be, um, the better for getting your ROI back and getting those leads turned over for into into deals for for the clients. Yep, that's great advice, and and it's it's not that's not something that we made up. It's it's what we've basically taken from our best clients who are getting amazing ROIs. Absolutely, so, this is all tried and true. Yep, yep. We yeah we we didn't create that theory or, or or method. I mean, we've basically just borrowed it and stolen it from our top clients who are running you know massive businesses, and and mm -hmm. a lot of those people are getting a ten x ROI with our service because they're doing that. And the other thing, guys, you know, if you're watching this video, just to think about is these leads that we're sending you, we actually spoke to them. We actually pre-qualified them. We've got, you know, five to eight pieces of data on them about their motivation, their time frame, their, their house value that they want, why they're moving, you know, all, all kinds of stuff that's, that's really good data. And it's going to be put into a web form and sent directly to you. And so they, they shared all this verbally with somebody over the phone. And so that's a way stronger, you know, lead in than somebody who just put their email address in online, but they're still not, you still don't have a relationship with them, right? Exactly. They're still not in your sphere. They, they don't know if they know you, trust you, like you, or see you as an expert yet. So that's why it's so important to call them, introduce yourself, build rapport, create that relationship, and then put them on a drip campaign where they're getting automation via email or text message or mailers or you know even additional follow-up phone calls in the future and so having a nurture drip campaign set up is one crucial thing that we require for all of our clients because that's what's going to take these leads and, and, and move them to clients and get you the ROI that you deserve absolutely that was very well put that is exactly what they need to do perfect well Amber thank you so much this is uh this is really helpful really cool to see the numbers and yeah, uh, no problem anytime Awesome. Well, we will, uh, guys, thanks for checking out this video. Um, Amber and I would love to talk to you, love to work with you. If it's a fit, um, we'll keep sharing helpful information like this. And if you're interested, make sure to go to our website, 1000callsaday.com, and you can sign up for a free consultation call just to chat with us and see if it's a fit for us to help you grow your business.